Hey guys, so in the last two videos we set up continuous delivery, so when we push up to GitHub it's deploying our both backend and frontend to Heroku and Netlify. Now another thing that you could set up is continuous integration with something like Travis or something like CircleCI, and what that does is it runs your tests before um, deploying. That's something I'm not going to set up right now, main reason being that our tests are broken. And I actually want to do kind of a separate series in the future on testing and then how to set up continuous integration. So I'm going to wait and do that in the future. I want to go ahead and move on to the next feature, which is setting up a update feature for both the listing and the user. So we're going to start off with the listing. And here are some steps that went through my brain or I think about before I actually uh, do something like this. So to start off to actually update a listing, we need to have a mutation on the server. So that's what we're going to build today, uh, the server code for that. And then this is all front end stuff that we're going to be going over in the future. Now what we're going to do is pick an actual listing that we need to edit. To do this we need to actually get the listings ID so we know if we're doing listing 1, listing 2, whatever. Uh, next thing is we actually need to fetch the current data for that listing so that way we can fill in a form and show the user the values that they can now edit and change around and then finally let's go ahead and call the uh, mutation uh, when they are happy with what it looks like. So let's go ahead and start adding the mutation on the server. So here is our uh, resolver for creating a listing. It's actually going to be very similar because we need to also handle pictures in case the user uploads a new picture in the update function. So on the server and modules and listing I'm going to create a new folder um, well, actually, why don't we just copy the listing or the create folder because it's going to be so similar. So I'm going to rename it to update. Um, I already have an update folder. It's empty. Let me delete that. All right. So now to start off, we have um, this code here that I don't want to be in two different places, but we need to use it in both places. So I'm going to create a folder called shared inside of listing and I'm going to create a process upload file. I'm going to go ahead and just copy this over. Paste it there and let's grab the imports. So I need to just export process and I can now import it over here. Alright so our create listing nothing changed we just took that into its own file so now in the update resolver over here we can then use that code but before we even dig into what that looks like why don't we get the schema GraphQL the way we want it so we don't need to have this scalar upload in multiple places um, we already have it in the other file so I'm just going to delete it I'm going to rename this to update listing input and I'm going to make all this optional by getting rid of the exclamation mark reason for that is I want to be able to uh, just update the name or just update the beds and not have to pass in all the other info But that's optional. You could keep this mandatory if you want to force the user to update all the fields at once um, The other thing is I want to add a picture URL And that's going to be a string reason for that is I may want to remove a picture and there's basically three states that we need to represent which I'll talk about more in a second why specifically we need two of these. Um, and then lastly we have down here I'm gonna call this update listing and it's going to take update listing input which we have right here and then also a listing ID. So this is going to be the ID of the listing that we actually want to update. So now let's hop into this resolver. We don't need these imports or these these two functions anymore here because we're just going to grab it or auto import it. Oops, so update listing. So we have the same input, but now we also have a listing ID. All right, so to start off, I want to talk about the picture. So the picture is going to have three states. The first one is user uploads a new picture. In that case, we would like to process the upload and set it to picture URL. Um, case two, user removes picture. Um, in that case, the user wants no picture for the listing. 
Maybe this is something you don't even want the allowed user to do. In that case, uh, you don't even have to worry about adding this field. But the reason why we're adding this field is the user can now pass null to the picture URL, and that will remove the picture. Um, and then lastly, this is the do nothing. In this case, if the user does not pass in a picture URL, we just keep what the old picture URL is. So these two cases are already covered. I'm going to get rid of this. Well, I'm going to comment it out for now. To cover this first case, I'm going to check if we have a picture. And if we have a picture, I'm going to say data.pictureurl is equal to, and we're going to upload. And now we don't need to pass the picture URL there. And now the reason why I'm doing it like this is because I want to keep whatever the picture URL is um, if, we, if we don't have to process an upload. If we don't get a picture, I just want to keep what this value is. Um, so that's why I'm doing that. So it's covering that case. And then these two cases are covered if they don't pass anything in or if the user passes null for the picture URL, we get both of those. Now here, it actually doesn't matter the, um, the session, so I'm just going to remove that. We need, don't need to update the user's ID, really. All right, so instead of doing dot .create, we're going to do .update, and we do not need to save at the bottom. Now how update works is the first parameter is an object, and here you specify how you find the listing that you want to update. In this case, we're going to look for an ID, and we're going to look for an ID that equals this up there. So I'm going to say a listing ID here. And then once we find that ID, um, we're going to update the data with the data we have right here. And so that's what's going on there. And I think this looks pretty good for update listing. Let's go ahead and give it a try. I have my playground up and running. I'm going to go ahead and refresh. So if I run this, here's what the data looks like on the right. So let's try this guy and update him. So he currently has guess of zero. Let's add him two guess. So I'm gonna copy this ID. And now I'm gonna say mutation update listing. We'll pass in that ID we just got. And let's make this pretty. Oh, I got rid of it. I guess because this is not an actual good value. So I'm gonna say guests two. And I messed up somewhere. Ah, this needs to be called input. So let's, now I can make it pretty. Okay, so I just had a syntax error there. So the listing ID, I'm telling it what I want to update, and here's the value that I want to change. Run that, it says true. I'm going to refetch. If we scroll down here, you'll notice it's still called random apartment, but now we have two guests, and it's still kept that same picture URL. So it looks like our update is working how we want it to. Um, we can try a few more values if we wanted to. Um, we can do the name. Actually, I don't want to ruin the name. Let's pick a different thing we want to update. Let's try longitude and latitude. All right, so I'm going to set that to 1 and latitude to 2. And let's see. Yep, looks like it's working. So that is it for setting up it on the server. We now just need to set up the front end to be able to adequately call this. Um, we have the back end logic now.